Hey, welcome to another episode of Behind the Picture with your friendly neighborhood host. It is me, I'm Cardi. Today we are talking about that one thing that slows, if in fact stops many photographers from even starting this business, and that's fear. Fear seems to be the thing that has photographers kind of stuck. So today we're gonna talk about overcoming the fear of starting your photography business. Everyone's story is different and how we get into making pictures when we decide to start taking it more seriously, when we learn that it could be a business. It's different for all of us. The thing that stops so many emerging photographers from actually becoming working photographers is fear. Today I'm gonna to talk a little bit about my story and how success and fear actually work. They actually work hand in hand. So here's some things that you should know about fear. Number one, when you push into fear, your fear decreases. It doesn't increase. It actually gets smaller when you lean into it. Sadly, when you pull back from fear, when you pull away from fear, fear actually increases. It increases in size, it increases in volume. How we make our fear go away is by leaning into it, by getting closer to it, getting closer to it, and by staring into it. And honestly, let's talk about what fear is. Fear is a lack of information. Fear is a lack of information, it's a lack of experience, and it's a lack of belief. Experience what you fear, and you'll see that you can do anything. I'll say that again. Experience those things that you fear, and you can do anything. I've never jumped out of a perfectly good airplane. That's like, I don't know many black people who do that for recreation, but people skydive. They embrace their fear and when they lean into it, it disappears. And also anybody who I've talked to that has jumped out of a perfectly good airplane has said it's changed their life. So you have to imagine there is actually a science to this. There's a science to this whole thing and there's a science to the fear and there's actually a science to how you get over the fear. So. Let's get into the science. So what's the science? First, let's talk about inertia. What's inertia? Inertia is this. An object at rest stays at rest unless there is a greater outside force that moves it. That's inertia. So. That means if you're not already successful, you kind of got to bring in an outside force to get you moving. We all need inertia. We need inertia. Inertia is the ability to start something that's static. We have to believe in ourselves. We have to believe in ourselves fill ourselves up with the right information so we can get over the inertia of staying exactly where we are right now. Right where you are right now. How do you change what's happening in your current life, your current situation is we need inertia. We need information. Information, when we fill ourselves with the right information, we can get over the inertia of, starting exa of staying exactly where we are but we do need to bring in that outside force. And the outfight, outside force starts to bring us into a momentum of success. And that momentum helps us break free of our current situation. So let's talk about momentum. What's momentum? Momentum is this. An object in motion stays in motion unless there's a greater outside force that stops it. 
So we need momentum. And honestly, if you really think about it, let's get into the science. You know, we're, we're fighting an uphill battle, but before we even start turning the road uphill, we have to start. And when we're starting, it's a single battle. And there's this rock, and this is us, and we're trying to push this rock forward. But the thing is, is that there's this invisible wall that we don't see. Oops. There's this invisible wall that we don't see. And it's almost like an outside force that's stopping our momentum from going because we need the inertia. We need the inertia to get us going. But if you think, um, I'm gonna draw an equation. The science heads are gonna know this. F equals M times A. You guys know that equation? Force equals mass times acceleration. So if you remember that equation, how we get this ball going is we need to increase our mass. We need to increase our mass. So we're actually able to be bigger than the ball or any obstacle that we're pushing. We now need to be bigger. If we get bigger, and how we do that is with information. We need to increase the mass of who we are as a person in order to push through our invisible walls. We need to make ourselves bigger than the fear that we face. We have to have a bigger, better vision of ourselves. If we have a bigger, better vision of ourselves, we can increase our mass. And when we increase our mass, we can move anything using inertia. I mean, using momentum. <laughs> we also have to gain information so we can perceive ourselves in a better light. Like sadly, many of us don't see ourselves positively. Oh my God, you can never do that. Oh, you're so stupid. Oh, I'm an idiot. Like you say things like that to yourself over and over and over again every day. And it's like words are code. And when you're saying these things, you're actually subconsciously believing them. So you have to change your language and actually believe in yourself so you can become a bigger mass so you can create momentum. You have to see yourself in a better light. We have to see ourselves bigger than any possible problem that we face. Any fear that we face, we have to see ourselves as bigger. We have to perceive ourselves as bigger. And we need to fill ourselves with information so we have the skills to actually start momentum. So here's this, here's an idea. Imagine this, you're in a car and you run out of gas right? Your car runs at a gas, you're by yourself. What happens? You got to push your car. Now, you know, it takes an incredible amount of force to get that car moving from stopped, right? But what happens when the car starts moving? When the car starts moving, you can push it along easily because the car has momentum, right? Guess what? Somebody could stand in front of that car that you're pushing. They could just stand there and push in the opposite direction. Car stops moving instantly because an outside force that's equal to the force that's pushing it has come in front of it and stopped it. So what happens if that car, by the way, actually starts going, starts running and gets to going full speed? Do you think you can stand in front of that car now 
and stopped its momentum? You know what happens if you do that. The force of the car is equal to its mass and acceleration. A mass moving is incredibly hard to stop moving once it's moving, unless an outside force greater than itself comes in its way. So much like if a bug hits a windshield on a car that's moving along the highway, it doesn't have a chance. Obviously the car is bigger than the mass of the bug that's trying to stop it. But what happens if a person stands in front of that car when it's moving? Whew, that car, a person, that person's finished. But what happens if a wall comes in front of that car moving at momentum? That wall, the mass of the wall is greater than the mass of the car. That car is going to fold. Or another car coming in the other direction going the same speed? Both of them are stopping dead. That's a car crash. And we've all experienced that feeling in life. We have to increase our mass. Information increases our mass. Sadly, fear, fear decreases our mass. Each time we fear, fe feel fear, we become smaller as people. And when we become smaller, problems that are actually small appear so much larger because we're diminishing ourselves, because we're falling victim to the fear. Fear can stop us from even showing up. Fear can stop us from trying. So you have to understand when it comes to success and momentum, it's not a flat road. It's actually, oops, wrong button. It's not a flat road. It's actually a hill and it crests and we're actually pushing a rock up a hill is what we're doing is we're pushing this rock up the hill and we need to increase our mass so pushing that rock up the hill becomes not a hard thing and as we get information and gain skills we can actually momentum up this hill. And then you can see once you get to that axis point in your life, in your business, in your photography business, it's just like arm wrestling, getting that arm, getting that like, uh, 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 uh. like when you're losing past the axis point, you know how hard it is to get it back to here. But once you're here, pushing it past the axis point, that's, it's so easy. So once you get up here, much like the car moving, much like you trying to stand in front of the car, the momentum of going down this way, whoo, you are flying once you get over the top of success. But I'm gonna tell you another analogy. There's also five levels of success as a business person, as a photographer, anything that you're trying to do, you're going to experience these five levels of success. And the the success push isn't like this. It actually is like this. And in fact, if you want to draw it a little bit more clearly, it's actually like this, then like this, and then it goes like this. That's what it's actually like. If you really want to talk about how you become a successful person and there's incredibly pivotal steps on this journey. So secret time, when I'm showing you this, this hump, this hump is over here. This is right here. Don't think that you still have to do this part. And I'm going to show you what these other spots are. This one, this is when you pick up your camera. You are an uninformed optimist. Means, oh my God, I see all kinds of people as photographers. They're making all kinds of money. I could be a photographer. You pick up your camera, put your money down, and now I have a camera, and I bought my kit lens, and now you're like, okay. Picture, 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 picture. Oh my God, I can make money. I should be a photographer. Um, you're an uninformed optimist. You have no clue. So pushing up here, 
on the road of uninformed optimists. That's super fun because you have no idea what you don't know. But then you crest and start to go downhill quickly and you hit this spot right here, which is called the informed pessimist. Now you're starting to realize, oh shit, I actually don't know as much as I thought that I knew. And then you hit this spot right here, which is called the Valley of Despair. And this is where photographers quit in the Valley of Despair, right there. And that's funny enough, only when you figure out the way to get out through and again, that's because you're diminishing yourself because you don't have the information. That's because these invisible walls that we put up for ourselves are actually stopping your momentum and you've let your momentum stop and you need inertia. You need to like break the inertia so you can get yourself going again. But like people think like people think that that uphill climb is when they pick up the camera. It's not here. It's actually here that your life actually begins when you get out of the valley of despair and fear fear makes this valley who fear makes this valley oh my god it makes it a pit it makes it a pit and people just go up here and then ah, they fall and they never are seen again so know that how you get out of the valley of despair is with information and you get information by doing what you're doing right now, continually flooding your brain with content and things that cause you to move the needle. Hopefully this is causing you to move the needle. So understand this valley of despair is actually your starting point where you are here and you now need to push the rock up over the hill. That is actually, and you've already gone through the phases of uninformed optimist, informed pessimist, and now you're in the valley of despair. So that's the beginning of your journey. If you've gone through all of that stuff behind, let's go Scuba Steve. Thanks for coming back for three months. You understand this is now the start. You had thought that you were starting before, but getting yourself out of the valley of despair and actually up this hill to success, that's where it goes. And once you get here to success, oh my God, you can do this over and over and over again. Because you realize that the next time you do it, your starting is like this, and then it's like this, and then it's like this. So there's way less radical on these on the up and down journey and your valley of despair isn't a pit anymore it's actually not an incredibly hard valley anymore it's just a little hill and after a while do it a couple more times and it's actually like this where you're starting you have a little bit of a down but you know when you hit here you're that's the very next step so each time you go through this process, you're getting bigger, your mass is getting bigger, and no problem that comes in front of you, you can't hit, face, or defeat. So remember, there are five phases of success. Uninformed optimist, informed pessimist, valley of despair. Informed optimist, and then success level one success level one don't think that like success level one means like oh my god i've done it because like this up and down is continual as you get bigger you come up against new obstacles each time you level up you get a new obstacle that you have to go through this process with so don't think that it ever gets any easier so there's good momentum and there's bad momentum. There's good momentum and there's bad momentum. Bad momentum is, I didn't take any photos today. Guess what? I didn't take any photos tomorrow. I didn't take any photos the next day or the next day or the next. Now you're actually tumbling with bad momentum. 
So negativity is going forward. Also, here's other bad momentum, your thought process and your belief in you being able to do this. The more you feed the negative energy of you not being able to do this, the bigger that gets. And that becomes that invisible wall. It's almost impossible for you to go to. It's like you can't succeed in anything that subconsciously you don't believe is going to work. You can't do it. You can't do anything that subconsciously you don't believe will work. We just can't. We wouldn't leave the house if we didn't know that we would successfully get to our workplace or successfully make it to whatever destination that is. We'd never leave the house. So we believe those simple things. We know when we push the picture, push the shutter, a, a picture is going to show up on the back. Like we believe those things, but we don't attach the same. If I do this, this will happen when it comes to ourselves. Everything is scientific. Everything is input and output. What you put in, you get back out. So if you're fearful of something, therefore you're not putting anything into it and therefore you're not getting anything back. And then you can't be asking, how come this isn't working? Well, because you're afraid. You're afraid of actually enlarging yourself so you can be bigger than the problems that you face. Let's go, Freddie. Welcome back. So any fear that is attached to a creative project a photography project, a video project, or ongoing work, any fear that I have attached to it, I lean into. I lean into anything. If, if I'm like anything that I'm afraid of doing, if it's attached to my photography, to my, making a video, to my business, anything scary, I lean into it. It's like, this is a new thing. This is a new thing. Like, I was never like this. I was never like this with business. That was the thing that I was too afraid of. I'm afraid of heights. I lean into that though. I'm afraid of heights, but I lean into it. I don't jump out of airplanes, but I will go into situations that make me feel that like, whew, I'm gonna pass out, but I do it. I'm afraid of ladders. I climb ladders. Have I fallen from a ladder? Absolutely. Absolutely. I climb scaffolding. I'm doing a project for the city where I have to climb the outside of this like silo and it's like 15 stories in the air on scaffolding. I'm scared to death, but I do it. I'm super cautious, but I still do it. I still lean into my fear. I assess safety. Like literally, I assess safety every second of my life. Every second of my life. I get it from my dad. My dad is like Mr. Safety. I try to keep me, anybody who's around me, I try to keep them all safe. It's like, it's my thing in all context. So with photography, sadly, staying safe is the exact opposite to what we should be doing. I'm not saying, by the way, go become a rooftopper or shooting like those videos where you're like on top of buildings illegally. Like I'm not saying do that, but I am saying that we can lean into the fear of making work. We can lean into the fear of the work in general. We can lean into the fear of the industry. Fear is just lack of information. You can lean into the fear of sharing the work, putting yourself out there. Whatever area you're fearful about, if you're fearful about being on camera, I was fearful about being on camera, but look at me, I'm right here, I'm doing it, and I do not care, because I've, I've enlarged myself, I've made myself bigger than the fear of actually doing it. I just do it, and I don't even think about it anymore, and I realize being on camera like this has changed my life and it's changing the lives of the people who are getting this information. So I had a dream of being a pro photographer. I had that dream when I was 17 years old. And I got to tell you, I've gone through adversity. I've had surgery. I've flatlined. I've like, I've done some insane things and had some insane things happen for me. 
back in the day, I would have said, oh my God, all these horrible things have happened to me. But I realize now as I'm older and wiser, I mean, I'm 53. Like once you get older, you realize things don't happen to you. They happen for you, for you to learn and for you to be able to figure out a way for it to not happen the next time. So know that I figured out a way to make a dollar with my camera when I was 19. I figured out how to make money with my camera when I was 19 and even before photography school. And by the time I was 21, I had a studio and I was making a living with my camera. It, there was, there was fear, but I did it anyways. Like, that's the thing. Like you can overcome fear and it's like, it's the most important journey that you have to embark as a photographer is getting over the fear. It's the most important journey that you're going to ever deal with. It's like, understand that our focus on a particular challenge, for me, my thing, my focus was the fear of talking to new people and cold calling. I'm horrible at talking to strangers, meaning me even saying that, I'm affirming it. I'll say again, I'll rephrase it. I was horrible at speaking to strangers. I was bad at breaking the ice, at cold calling, at talking to strangers, but I didn't have the information and I didn't have the confidence. I was diminishing myself and I was actually pumping up the fear. And all that did was make it so I didn't do anything. It made me paralyze. Fear has an incredible impact. Fear can manifest in various forms. For photographers, fear appears as rejection or inadequacy. Like you're afraid of someone not liking your photographs. You got to get over, over that fear because like people are supposed to not like your photographs. It means that you're focusing on a specific niche. That's not, they're not for everybody. So I had that fear of initiating conversations with people, with potential clients, with cold calling. But it's like, I realized as I started to progress through my photography career, the fear of interacting with clients was a significant barrier. It was actually holding me back. Like, and also I was actually making this fear grow stronger by avoiding it. And years went by, decades went by without me addressing the fear of reaching out to potential clients. And because of that, it almost ended my business. When I confronted it, like when I started to confront it, I realized like there shouldn't have been fear there at all. I realized like people are just like me and like attracts like, and I would find my tribe. Fear arises because of a lack of experience and self-belief. We have to actually believe that we can do this. You have to believe that and you have to tackle that fear head on. And self-confidence comes from you learning information, applying that information and seeing the results for yourself. That's where self-confidence comes from is that whole act of photography is a self-confidence builder because each time you photograph, the next time you go out, you should be better if you're learning from the mistakes you made the last time. So fear comes from a lack, lack of experience and a lack of self-belief. And you have to tackle that head on. So early on, I had a very big list of what I was afraid of. I'm still afraid of things, but the things that I'm afraid of are like different things. And I'm working on being afraid of nothing. You know, I used to keep telling myself I'm fearless. Keep telling yourself I'm fearless. I'm not afraid of anything. So early on, I was afraid to speak to strangers. 
And bigger than that, I was afraid to speak to people who had the power to hire me for work. I was afraid to speak to those people. If they didn't know me already, if there wasn't a bridge or a warm introduction already made. I was afraid of asking for work. I was afraid of asking for work. I really was. Like, I was really afraid of asking for work. I was afraid that there'd be no opportunities for me. I really was. I thought there'd be no opportunities for me as a photographer. I was young when I started. And because I was young, I was actually, um, because I was young, I actually got scared. And I, I didn't think that I was going to be taken seriously. I really didn't. I wish that I was taken seriously, but I actually didn't think that I would be taken serious. I also thought that I was too young. That was another thing that I was afraid of. I thought I was too young and I thought, um, I thought I was too inexperienced. So there's a psychology of fear, you know, there's a psychology. And when it comes to photography, understanding what the root cause of your fear is, is how you get over it. Most of the times, the root causes of our fears aren't justified. They come from something that happened a long time ago in a place far, far away, like with people who we don't even know now. Like there's things that happen that cause trauma and those traumatic things, sometimes we get stuck in that spot and we just make ourselves smaller rather than make ourselves bigger so we can overcome these new problems that we're trying to face. So, so how I battled speaking to people is through preparation. Like I realized that I wasn't doing the right things and I wasn't doing the research. Like I, I knew maybe I needed to speak to this person and I knew I wanted to work for that person, but I didn't know anything else. I didn't realize that I have to show my value and talk about transformations and also find common ground and have a reason for reaching out. And like, there's like a way, there's like a five part formula for how you do a cold reach out. And I didn't know that. So finally, 30 years later, I took a course on how to reach out to people, how to reach out to strangers, how to talk to strangers, changed my life, changed my life, changed my YouTube channel. I'll tell you that changed my interactions with everybody. And now I just try to teach it. I just try to teach it seriously. So I realized that, um, I realized that all I needed, welcome to nations. I realized that all I needed was um, information. And if I had information, and if I knew that there was a framework that I could follow, I would be able to, to do it. And I started to follow that framework of reaching out to people and it worked and then my fear went away. So there, like, you have to, when it comes to your fear, you have to turn your fear into empowerment. And there's a way to turn our fear into empowerment. We can do it. And the hard thing is, is many of us don't believe that we can do it. So because they don't believe that you can turn your fear into empowerment, they just live in the fear. So imagine, you have to believe that you're talented. So this is how you can turn your fear into empowerment. Number one, you believe that you're talented. And when you think about talent, you understand that that's a gift because not any, not anybody just gets the gift of being able to see photographs, frame them and, and capture emotions. Like, the fact that you can do that, like that's a gift. 
and it means that you're talented. You also have the skills to operate the camera. So the skills is something that this, this part never stops, by the way, this never stops. And as you increase your mass, you'll realize you'll, you'll come up against new obstacles and you'll need new skills to overcome those ones. But your gift and your talent that never goes away, but your skills, whoo, you need those. Also, there's a technique. There's a technique. There's many techniques, but the technique to make money like this actually a technique and there's many techniques. There's many techniques to make money, but you understand you have to learn these, these, these get revealed to you. But if you're actively seeking skills and techniques, it just accelerates all of this. And also, it starts like this. We start like this. We hope. So we're hopeful. We get information and then we start to believe that we can do this. Once we're in the area of believing, if you still feed information into yourself, you will get to the point of knowing, you know, that you can do this. And guess what? All of this is empowerment and the empowerment that you can feed yourself makes fear go away. There is no fear when you're all about empowering yourself to be better because you realize you're talented, you have a gift, you have skills, but that just gets you to the pictures part. You actually need the techniques to make money and you got to believe it. You got to know it and hopeful, hopeful. You have no inertia when you're hopeful, no inertia. When you believe you start to get momentum. And when you are getting to the point of knowing you are unstoppable. And essentially that's where I am. I'm unstoppable. Like that's my perception of myself. I know that it's true. So this is how we get towards empowerment. This is what I believed. When I started, when I was 19 years old, this is what I believed. I believed that I was talented. I believed, I believed that I was good enough to be a working photographer. I believed that I was better than photographers that were working. I believed that. And I believed that I was going to make it. I believed there was no question that I was going to make it. I also believed I was going to be published. I was going to be published. And I also believed that I was going to be a household name. Everybody was going to know Cardi as a photographer. Everybody. I believed all of those things when I was 19 years old without a house to stand in. I had no reputation, nothing to back it up. But I knew all of those things when I was 19. I knew them. I'm still here, by the way, 33 years later. So we have to build confidence. I've talked about confidence in other episodes, but we do need to build confidence. Confidence means confide in self. We have to build and cultivate confidence, but you have to cultivate that. You have to view each interaction as an opportunity rather than a challenge. And if you do that, it fundamentally changes your networking. Every time you meet somebody, 
It's an opportunity. Oops. I can't talk and write, by the way. You try to do it. You can look at every relationship or every meeting with somebody as an opportunity or a challenge. I look at it as an opportunity. There's no, there's never a necessary need to look at it as a challenge. It's always an opportunity. And if you are real, if you are kind, I didn't say nice, I said kind. There's a big difference. Nice people are some of the evilest people in the world. But kind, kind people tell you the truth. So if you're real and kind, genuine, you are increasing your perceived value. You're increasing the value of how people see you. But it's you like if you don't see yourself that way, how do you expect other people are going to see you? People see you how you see yourself, not how they see you. People don't judge you. People just react to the judgment that you've made for yourself, on yourself, about yourself. So understand that overcoming communication fears is something that I had to do. But once I did that, it not only enhanced my networking skills, but it contributed to growth, my growth as a person. It did that. And it opened more doors and opportunities than I can list right now. I leaned into my fear and it changed my life. So what I'm going to urge you to do is create an action plan, a personal action plan, clear, achievable steps to confront and overcome your fears, whatever it is. If it's a fear of starting a business, let's confront it. If it's a fear about networking, communication, putting yourself out there, talking on camera, being on video, whatever your fears are, let's create an action plan to like get you through them. Set clear, achievable steps so you can confront and overcome your fears, whatever they are. So early on, let's talk about what I was doing to overcome my fears when I started my business when I was 19 years old. Started it like officially registered when I was 20, but I was doing all this when I was 19. So what I was doing is I was specializing when I was 19. I didn't know anything, but I knew I was specializing. I was a fashion and beauty photographer. That's what I was doing. And I was testing models, testing models when I was a teenager. I was shooting creatives, which are model shoots for free to develop my portfolio. I was getting better every session. I was learning how to direct models. I was learning how to light. I was learning how to print. And I was doing meetings. I was doing all of that scared to death the entire way, but I was doing it. I was doing it. I was afraid, but I was doing it anyways. <sighs> it's, it's okay to be afraid. It's okay, it's natural, but you have to do it anyways. You have to figure out a way to cope with the fear and do it anyways. Because if not, nothing happens and you're not moving that rock and you're diminishing yourself and you're allowing like inertia to win. Anyone in business that is successful has overcome inertia. Everybody has to. Anybody who has been overweight and has lost weight has overcome the inertia of being a set at like a, having a lifestyle where they're not active to the point where they're they've changed their lifestyle that's why they've lost the weight is because their goal wasn't losing weight their goal was changing their lifestyle losing the weight was the result of a lifestyle change so when you change your lifestyle those people don't gain weight back they change the lifestyle. People who are thinking about, I just want to lose 10 pounds or 20 pounds. It's like, okay, so then you do that and then you course correct back to exactly how you were because you had the wrong goal. 
One of the biggest fears that people have is speaking on camera. Speaking on camera, <laughs> speaking on camera, it, it, it's hard, but it's the easiest thing. I'm literally in a room by myself and I'm just talking to this thing that I, I use here, looking through blah, blah, blah. Now it's just pointed at me and I'm talking to it. Like it's the easiest thing once you get over the hump, but it's hard for photographers to get over the hump. So I made, um, over the last like couple of months, I've been developing a bunch of things and I made an email course. It's a 30 day email course that'll take you from a shy, afraid to talk on camera to somebody who's ready to start their YouTube channel. By the way, if that's something that you're interested in, cause I haven't released it yet, I will drop it. I'll release it this week and you guys can sign up and pay the $30. I'm going to charge a dollar a day. How about that? A dollar a day for you to get better on camera. And in 30 days, you'll be better. And if you, whew, if you're not getting it after 30 days, do another 30 day challenge, do it, do it again. But I'm guaranteeing after 30 days, you'll be so confident on your zoom chat. So confident on any time that you have to speak on camera that you're going to be excited to make a video guaranteed. So, um, yes, leave a comment 30 day challenge in the comments, not in chat, but under the video. And I will drop that and get it going. So, Understand that you have to embrace your fear, embrace it in order to understand it. So you can see it's not all that it cracked up. was that cracked up to be that thing that you were afraid of is probably this big. And in fact is actually stopping your life from starting. It's this little thing, stopping your life from starting and if you embrace your fear, it's your pathway. It's your pathway. If you, if you can crack this code, do you understand you're ahead of me? If you can crack this code early in your photography journey, you're ahead of me. And I've been doing this for three decades. Like every photographer's journey is unique. You have to face your fear, face your fear of communication face your fear of starting your business, face your fear of interacting with strangers, doing photo shoots. You have to face your fear. It's literally the most vital step towards your success at this. Like this is how you're going to make it. I haven't done a Q and a in a while, by the way, and it's Sunday. So sometimes on these Sunday services, I like to ask you, um, what are you guys afraid of? What are you afraid of specifically you? I'm talking not to the group. I'm talking to you. What are you afraid of? I want to hear in chat. If you're here watching me live, I want to hear what you're afraid of in chat. And if you're watching me after the fact and you've made it to the end of this video, thank you. I appreciate you. Um, but let me know what it is right now in chat that you're afraid of because there's an answer. Ugh, Dan Pye is afraid of not having money. So, I was afraid of not having money, but you understand in being afraid of not having money, it's, you probably have no money right now, <laughs> right? Because you're shining so much light on your lacking and not giving enough light on success and the route to get there. Are you in my masterclass, Dan Pai? You should be in my masterclass, my guy, because honestly, um, I understand when you're saying not having money to pay rent. I, I understand like, that's what we have, bills. We have to pay the things that keep us housed, obviously. But understand that in focusing on your lacking, you're just making it bigger. And in fact, you're just doing nothing because the lack of that, and in, well, what you probably do is just get a nine to five job, which is probably what you're doing because you're so afraid of not having money to pay rent that you're willing to do something that you hate in order to get just that money to take care of that thing that you're afraid of. Therefore, that's ruling your whole life. You understand? It's ruling your whole life. 
where you focused on success, like you just set your rent on auto pay and you just focus on all the things that you need to do to move your needle for your photography career and don't think about that, that just takes care of itself. I used to be stressed about rent. Guess what? Every month I had issues with rent. I used to be stressed about it. I used to give it so much attention. And like weeks would go by. It's like, oh my God, it's week two, it's week three, it's week four. It's like, you just end up so wrapped up in that, that nothing happens. So Dominic says he's got fear of being on video. That's a thing. Again, I'm going to, I'm going to drop this 30 day challenge, I think. Um, and that's going to help a lot of you if you decide to use it. Um, Scuba Steve says, I'm afraid of failing financially as you are the sole provider for yourself and your wife. Yeah, I understand that. It's afraid it's, but you're not given anything that you can't handle. You're not given anything that you can't overcome. You just have, you like, and again, you have one kid, one, one kid makes two kids look like no kids. You know what I mean? Or two kids makes one kid look like no kids. That's what I'm trying to say. Two kids makes one kid look like no kids. Having one child, easy breezy, easy breezy. Two, three, whew, starts to get harder. One, you're fine. <laughs> Thank you so much for the compliments, my guys. Um, I appreciate you. Um, so Anna says, afraid of overestimating my skills potential. Give me a break, Anna. Oh my God overestimating your skills it's like this you know what you can do anything that you can't do if you don't believe that you can do it you're never going to get there so overestimating my skills and potential ah, sorry i'm not even i'm not even giving that any kind of light let's go lashanta follows me all the way from instagram appreciate you Thanks for hanging out with us today. Mac, um, fear of gaining the momentum and maintaining it. You guys, I'm sorry to say, but like the, the like, I'm hearing a lot of like BS here, really. And I mean, I hate to be so dry, but fear of gaining momentum and then maintaining it, it's, do you understand objects in motion continue in motion unless an equal or greater than force stops it? It's the law of momentum. All you need to do is continually feed yourself, feed your brain so you're bigger and you can always keep your momentum flowing. There's nothing that can stop you. Let's go, Zs. Thanks for becoming a subscriber. There's nothing that can stop you. Like you having that, like, it's just, I'm sorry, but that's weak, weak, weak. And literally having that mindset, you have to understand people who are less talented than you that actually believe in themselves are just going to jump over you. And you'll be like, why didn't I start? You know what I mean? Like, seriously, it's sorry. That's weak. Um, Miss Jennifer says, um, I'm afraid of succeeding. Um, I, my life would be unmanageable because I'll have to produce all the time. <laughs> another total week, another complete BS reason to be afraid because anything that you build, anything, build a house, don't touch it for three years. What happens? You go back to your house. You haven't touched it for three years. Haven't done anything. There is trees growing through the tiles and you go in the kitchen and there's like snakes in there and like the, the environment will take over anything if you do nothing to maintain it. That includes your body. That includes the house. That includes anything that has been created. If you don't continually work on it, it is, it's no longer. Think about Blockbuster Video. Blockbuster Video thought that they had something that was so perfect that it would never, ever break. This company called Netflix came up and they were sending videos via 
VM and having no late fees and sending these DVDs. And then at some point, the technology came up so they could deliver that online. And at one point, Blockbuster had the opportunity to buy Netflix for, I think, something like $10 million. And Blockbuster was like, <laughs> $10 million? I wouldn't give you 10 cents. And you see where Blockbuster is now because Blockbuster didn't change, but the industry changed around it. And where is Blockbuster now? Nowhere. If you're not con Kodak, there's another one. Like if you're not constantly tweaking and adapting and changing and defining and redefining and re-exploring your business, it will fail. If you're not doing that with your body, with your mind, your body will fail, your brain will fail. So you're afraid of succeeding because your life will become unmanageable because you're going to have to con continually produce all this. You have to produce all the time now, only you're doing it for somebody else, not happy. You're going to have to always produce. You're just, it's your choice whether you're continually producing for somebody else safely because they're giving you a paycheck or you're producing for yourself, making your own content, growing your own audience. What would you rather do? One of them is a lot more lucrative. I'll tell you that. Sorry, that's, um, that you're busted. You're busted, Miss Jennifer. Who else is afraid of something? Being rejected or told that your content sucks. Here's an idea. Make content that doesn't suck. Make content that doesn't suck. If you're worried about rejection or being told that your content sucks, it's because deep down, you know that your content's not good enough yet. Yes or yes? Yes or yes? Yes or yes? Deep down, you know that your content isn't good enough. You haven't tried hard enough. You haven't done the reps. You haven't put the work in enough. So you know someone like me can come up and be like, I can call you out, right? Because you know that I exist in the world. That's why you realize that your work might not be good enough. Make your work better. Dive in deeper. Push harder. Spoonman says, I ain't scared. That's right. You can't be scared. It's the vibe I want to hear. Um, inertia. So what else? Give me, <laughs> Scuba Steve says, it's like saying I'm, I'm afraid of being too good at my job. So Dominic says, being a family man, I fear that anything that would cause problems for my family is a major stress. You have four kids. So let's go, Nick. Thanks for hanging out with us. Thanks for becoming a member. Appreciate you. So imagine this. What happens if you don't become successful, Dominic? Right now you're a f you're, you're family man and you're worried that like anything that didn't work would be like, how's it working right now, buddy? How's it working right now with you driving 49 hours a week? 49 hours a week. How's that working for you right now? Are you around to like, you're providing, but you're not present. Would you rather dedicate those 49 hours to trying to figure out that combination lock so you can actually be a successful photographer and literally make four times as much money that you're making right now doing what you're doing and also be present for your wife and your four kids? Like your fear is like, is actually like, <laughs> You're holding on to the wrong things, my guy. Sadly, you're holding on to the wrong things. I mean, we've talked on, we've talked one-on-one. -on -one. This is why I know, you know? If you have four kids, like you, Stoic Jason, know that, like, they should be the motivation. They should be the motivation. Like, literally, <laughs> they should be the motivation. They should be the thing that, like, makes it so you're up at till five o'clock in the morning, like I am every day. I have two kids and I'm up until five o'clock in the morning because I'm building a future for them, you know? So, <sighs> there's nothing, nothing that anybody can say here that I'm not going to be, have a reason. Afraid that your niche is not marketable. That's because you have a non-marketable niche. There's you, like, Stuart, you're answering your own question. You're afraid that your niche is not marketable. You know why? Because you know that your niche is not marketable. That's why you're afraid that your niche is not marketable. Based on your market and your research, you know that your niche is not marketable, but 
you're sticking to it because you know you need a niche. That's why you're afraid that it's not marketable. Marketable. Do more research on your niche. You don't need to settle on something just because you need to settle on something. You need to settle on something because it's the right niche for the market that you're in. That's why you feel that way. Um, so James says, fear of discovering I miss the actual talent part and I will lose the desire to continue doing something I'm currently doing just for the joy of it. Um, again, that's imposter syndrome, James. Like, I, I, I haven't seen your work. The talent part, that's not up. It, it, again, talent is like, it's people who can sing and there's people who can't sing. You know what I mean? And how do you, how do you know if someone can sing or not? Well, you have a, an ear that understands tone. We all do. We all have an ear that understands tone. We all have eyes that also recognize things that are visually appealing and things that are repulsive or offensive or that causes us to turn away, look away. We all can create either one of those things. Like you can treat photography mathematically. You can do it and, and do all those things that I say that you should do in order to find your niche and become a working photographer without even believing in yourself. At some point, you're going to have to, though, because it's impossible for you to succeed in anything you don't believe in. But at some point, your belief has to catch up with where you actually are in your life, you know? So, um, Stoic Jason, having four kids, like, there's no quicker way than magnifying your money. And, and, and like, that's how you take care of a wife and four kids is you magnify your money. And how you magnify your money is you don't make money just from one thing. You make money from six things. And, and as preferably four of those six things, you make money passively. Number one, write a book. Number two, have a newsletter. Number three, monetize that newsletter. Number four, have a YouTube channel. Like, there's, there's things that you can do with your four kids, like talk about how you manage four kids while being a professional photographer or trying to be a professional photographer. That's a story. That's a story that I'm into. That's a story that I'm interested in. And if you made a YouTube video every week talking about your insane life of trying to be a photographer while having four kids, I'd watch that. So again, you like we make content. We are content creators, but you are sitting, waiting for someone to ask you to make content and in exchange for money in, instead of just continually making like I do, I make content. I make content four days a week. I, I make video content four days a week. I make photography content. I write like I do so much content and I just put it out there. And what happens is people find me because of my content because I put it out there and I do it four days, four days a week. So if you're not putting out content and you're trying to be a content creator you're wondering why you're not getting hired to make content. Maybe it's because you don't have a con enough content out there for people to actually find you and know that you make content so they can hire you to make more content. So, um, Romeo says, my fear of not being fruitful. Fear of not being fruitful is, is like, so that's a motivator. And I like how you said that. You said fear of not being fruitful. And then you said, my fear of not being fruitful is one of my main motivators. Like you're a person that you have your big in spirit. Now where you need to be also big is big in skills because you have talent, but you need to be big in skills as well as big in spirit because you're big in talent, you're big in spirit. Now let's increase technique and let's increase skills because then you're big in spirit, you're big in talent, you're big in skills, and you're big in technique. Now you have the four corners, you have the four pillars, and those four pillars, nothing can stop you. So you know you need to only focus on your skills and your techniques because you are very strong in these other areas. And you're also, you're also confident, Romeo. So you have that also going for you where so many people don't have that confidence. You have fitness. So you have a fitness momentum. So you've, you've proven in other areas of your life that you can create momentum going forward. I'm here to help you create your photography momentum and your business momentum. And that also going forward the same way as the rest of your life is. So guys, um, 
Dota, last one said, I just re restarted and reintroduced myself back to the world of nature photography and I'm full of steam of head. Um, travel, household name, collaboration, merch, takeover time. Dota, um, whenever you're taking photos, I want you to ask yourself, who would pay me to take this photo? Who would pay me to take this photo? Um, building a business on nature photography. Nature photography is like taking pictures. I'm a photographer that makes pictures, meaning I have an idea and then I execute it. So the difference between taking and making pictures is that there are people who hire me with their ideas to make pictures. There are no one who is hiring you to take pictures of nature unless you are selling prints, selling books, doing exhibits and doing it at such a high level. And keep in mind, you can look at like a National Geographic level sunset and be like, all right, next, all right, next, all right, next. Like people will look at a National Geographic level photo and look at it for like half a second. Next, next. So understand that that's how people are gonna be taking in your photographs. So you have to sell stock. You have to sell prints. You have to sell books. You ha like, there's so many things that you have to do because literally no one's hiring you to make those photos. Nobody. That's taking photos. I make photos. So I try to teach people how to make photos, which is I have an idea. Let's take, turn that idea into a photo or an, a, a CD cover or a, a magazine cover or a double page spread or an ad. Like an art director comes, it's like, this is the ad. This is the sketch. And then I make the photo based on a sketch. Like, do you understand? That's why I get $10,000 a day. No one gets $10,000 a day for taking photos. They get that for making photos. There is a huge difference. So I appreciate your momentum, but right now you are an uninformed optimist, meaning you don't know what you don't know and you are all guns blazing. At some point you will crest and you will realize, start to realize like, okay, actually Cardi was right. Who is going to help pay for this whole thing? Who's paying me to do this? You can't do assignments if you're shooting nature because no one's going to send you to nature for an assignment. They're going to send somebody who's been proven to do that and has three decades experience on you. Those people are like National Geographic level photographers. So. The quickest route is actually making photos for clients. They have ideas, you have ideas, you execute ideas for a common role, a website, a book, a magazine cover, a CD cover, like go somewhere. For you, shooting nature, where do they go? In frames, on walls, in books. So it's mean, it's, it's not commercial photography, it's fine art photography, which is an entirely different world which is not really even the world that I know enough about because there's not really enough money there. There's like a small percentage of people who've cracked the code to make a living as a fine art photographer. Seriously, small amount of people. Way more people shoot commercially because companies have tens of thousands, of hundreds of dollars to pay for a photo session, to execute, to sell their product. You're not selling any product when you shoot nature. Therefore, there is no billion dollar industry behind nature photography. You feel me? Hope that helped you. Anyways, um, you're gonna do what you do, but um, you say you currently have a print shop um, and book currently being edited. What you need to have is print selling and your book already pre-sold and you've already sold 500 copies of it. Because what's gonna end up happening, and I don't mean to discourage you, but you're gonna end up having books, books that nobody wants because you haven't sold them before you made it. You sell the book before you make it because you already know you have the demand for it. And then you use the money that you get from pre-sales. Number one, you have a guaranteed amount of people who are buying your book because they're buying it before it's made. And you use the money from your pre-sales to print the book so that's a wash, so it didn't cost you anything, and then you have extras that you now sell at pure profit. That's how it works. If you're spending your own money to print a book that you have not sold, you are now going in the hole <clears throat> in order to have something 
that you haven't, the market hasn't proved that they want yet. You see me? So again, do you, but from a guy who has done a book, my first coffee table book, and I have like <clears throat> Phil Collins, Roger Moore. Oops, I guess I'll use this camera. Um, uh, some other highlights. Tom York from Radiohead. Can't show those pages. Ja Rule, Amory. Like, this is my book. And it's like Daft Punk, Grandmaster Flash, DMX. Like, I have my book, but understand, I sold this book. It was $100. And guess what? I sold 100 books before I printed it. The money from the sales that I pre-sold the book paid to make the book. Did a party for the book when the book was released to give the book to the people who bought it, sold the rest of the books. Sold out my first run because I pre-sold the book. That's how you do it. And like, again, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to like, but if you're making a product without pre-selling the product already, you are silly. And also, oh my God, if that costs money, like you're hard copy printing and spending $10,000 to print a, a thousand books without have sold already half of them. Oh my God, you're now going to be sitting on a thousand books because you haven't done, you, 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 ha you put the horse before the cart. Where in this situation, you put the cart before the horse. You sell the book before you make it. Anything you're trying. And, and funny enough, I've already, I just did it to you in this episode. I literally said this. I have a 30-day course. Literally, a 30-day email, get better on camera course. I have it. It's not out yet. I haven't put it up into the system yet. But if you want it, leave a comment saying, I want to get better on camera. Give me a 30-day challenge. If I get enough people there, then I'm going to make it. And guess what? Those people will buy it because I've already determined. And if not enough people leave a comment in this video and say, yes, I want that, then I won't release it. You see what I'm saying? So, yeah. I, I just, data. I, I am like, I, I don't even know how to explain myself. I, I, I'm, I'm just a different kind of a cat. And there's nothing that I want more than to see people's success. Um, I hope today brought you value. Honestly, like it's all about adversity and, and getting around adversity, perseverance, determination, dedication. I'm a savage and, and know that there's no way in this green earth that I was not, and I am not going to be a successful photographer. Like I am already, I, I'm doing it. I've been doing it for decades. I've shot tons of amazing faces for magazines all over the world. Like I've been doing it and doing it, but like I'm not stopping. And my determination, like my spirit, how big I am, how confident that I appear to you, understand that this is learned behavior because I am a shy, quiet, nerdy eight-year-old boy. And I still, funny enough, I still see myself as that. And I, I did a post recently on, on my blog, A Life Behind the Camera. I send this out every Saturday. And this post, there's me when I was nine. And understand that when I was nine, and you have to read this story, like when I was nine was the first time I heard, my mom came home and she was crying and she said her, her friend got fired and I didn't know what fired meant. I was nine. And she told me it meant that her boss, the boss wasn't gonna pay her anymore. And like, I asked like, well, how's she gonna take care of her family? And my mom's like, she can't, that's why I'm crying. And then I started to cry and I was so angry and like, and I asked my mom to explain to me like, um, who fired her? And she said, the boss. And I said, who's that? And my mom's like, the boss is the person who owns the company. And I was like, okay. And I said, can the boss get fired? And my mom's like, well, no, because they own the company. 
So like I went to my room and I came back like half an hour later and I told my mom like, I've decided what I'm gonna be for when I grow up. My mom's like, okay, Stephen, what are you gonna be? So I'm gonna be a boss. I'm gonna be a boss because I, number one, I'm never gonna fire anybody and no one's ever gonna fire me because I'm, I'm never gonna create this environment where like somebody's crying. Like I'm never gonna create that environment. Like. No one's ever gonna fire me because I don't wanna ever be in that situation and I'm never gonna fire anybody. Like that's just <laughs> like, that was what I decided. I was gonna be a boss. I decided when I was nine. And that mindset, like that, that was PTSD. Like that traumatized, if that didn't happen, I wouldn't be a photographer. I'd be working in a factory somewhere like my parents did. You understand that, right? Like I would do just like everybody else before me did, right? So we have to have those things that like, shock us into action. Those things that like make us bigger than the problems that we face. For me, when you emotionally attach, it's for all of us. If you emotionally attach a reason why you have to reach a goal, it's way different. It's like, you need to lose 20 pounds. So I need to lose 20 pounds so I can fit into this dress to get married. Okay, so guess what happens? They lose the 20 pounds, they fit into that dress, they get married, and then the husband now has this woman, and then she explodes to 60 pounds overweight as soon as the wedding's over. Because it wasn't a lifestyle change. It was just goal, wedding, look good one day, and then afterwards, go to shit, right? So you, you have to change your framing and like think of it as this is what I'm doing for my life. This is what's happening now. This is now my goal. And then the result of that is more money. The result of that, obviously your body's gonna change. Like all of that happens as a result of you completely deciding that something is going to be. But fear stops all of us. So you can't be afraid. I hope today brought you value. I will see you on Tuesday for another one. We do these every Sunday. This is Ask a Photo Pro Tuesday, Thursday. Sundays are behind the picture, which is what you're watching right now. Today, we are talking about fear. Today was all about helping you break through that fear barrier because we do get scared. I've, I'm have i scared. I'm, I get scared. I get nervous every single time I do this. Know that every single time that I do this, it, I have to go through a process to be on camera, but I do it. I show up because the consequences of me not doing it not only affect my life in a negative way, it affects the people who are benefiting from this content in a negative way as well. So I hope today brought you some love, some value. If you were hanging out with me live today, thank you. These two... They love hanging out with me. They're here constantly, continually. Oki gifting the memberships. Oki, thank you so much, my guy. Oki has been watching me for almost two years, I want to say. Easily a year and a half. Oki is an incredible supporter. Always giving money. Always gifting memberships so you can get commercial-free content. And also, reminder, the whole thing that you're watching right now, you notice how there was no commercials? No commercials because I have members. Members on this channel are why I'm able to give you commercial free content. Members are able to talk to me in chat, which is dope, and talk to each other in chat. I also have an amazing growing Discord community of photographers who are all like you trying to get to the next level with their photography, trying to be pros. So um, make sure you are part of that. Also, I have a masterclass. My masterclass happens today which is the first weekend of the month is when the master classes happen i do a master class to yes sir yes you know just about 50 photographers that are wanting more insight than i give here on youtube for free if you are interested in the master class it starts at 4 30 you need to go to oh by the way if you want to watch it after you can do my master class you don't have to do it live but it is a live experience and it's pretty amazing. Um, go to thecardimethod.com and you can find out all information about all of my education. I have a free pricing guide. If you're stuck with pricing, you can just scroll up down the website and see at the bottom there, I have a free pricing guide. Give me your email address and I will send you that pricing guide. Guys, I hope today brought you value. If you've made it to the end of this video, make sure you're subscribed. The hardest part 
is actually showing up saying that you're going to do this and start <laughs> start manning or womaning up and getting ready to push because this is an uphill battle. I appreciate you all for watching me live. Thank you so much. If you're watching this after the fact and you made it to the end of this video, thank you. Do me a favor, leave me the thing that you have been the most afraid of. Leave me that in chat so I can make you feel silly for being afraid of it, like I did to everybody who gave me some weak ass reasons for being afraid of starting this photography business. You gotta realize like nobody is put on earth to make you famous except for you. You need to create your own legend. You're in the business of making yourself successful, but sadly, you're probably working a nine to five, helping someone else's dreams come true, putting some else's priorities above your own, putting money in someone else's wallet while you get a small, small, small percentage of that. You are probably still trading your time for money, which in the 21st century, for the 21st century content creator, that is not what we do. We trade our ideas and our talent and our skill stack for money. Guys, I hope today brought you value. I'll see you on the next one.